Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a discovery, and I guess a creation, of a really strange phenomenon in quantum physics. A phenomenon that you can kind of see right here that the scientists are referring to as a quantum domain wall. A sort of formation of atoms together, forming a larger object, but that seem to behave in an extremely unpredictable way, creating a lot of effects nobody expects. And so in other words, we're going to be talking about yet another discovery when it comes to quantum mechanics and something that could actually help us understand the universe, but also possibly help us develop technologies when it comes to quantum computing as well. But because this is such a complex topic, I wanted to kind of make it simple and first talk a little bit more about the actual phenomena we're talking about. Because all of this is based on the main principle of quantum physics, which is known as quantum interference which I guess is best understood with the iconic experiment known as the double slit experiment that we've discussed on the channel many times before. In a nutshell, all matter, and also all light, can technically display both properties of being a wave and a particle. This is usually referred to as the wave-particle duality. And what this means is that if we were to take a bunch of particles, or if we actually take, let's just say, a laser, and we shine it through two different slits that you see right here, it's going to start producing an interference pattern that's going to be visible on the opposite side. This is known as the wave interference. If you were to place an observer, or basically if you were to detect which of these slits all of this passes through, it suddenly stops doing that and it actually starts to produce a different pattern. With the pattern resembling something that's a particle. Now the laser itself did not change, but the pattern on the other side will change. And this, of course, forms the basis for the quantum mechanics and for most of the ideas in quantum physics. But it doesn't only apply to simple particles or simple lasers. Over the past few years, the scientists have been successfully able to recreate these effects in even larger objects, with the recent object actually being macroscopic, meaning that you can actually see it with your eyes. I believe it was the size of a grain of sand. But what this means is that these quantum effects don't just apply to atoms and just to lasers. A lot of different objects exhibit these effects, it's just they need to have special conditions. And it's been known for a pretty long time now, for almost 100 years, that there's a very interesting phenomenon that forms when you put a lot of atoms, or a lot of really any particles, in the conditions where it's basically really really cold, and also the density is really really low. Because even though hot atoms are still going to be acting like particles, at some point, once the energy is low enough, their actual interference pattern and their wave uh, function is going to be increasing in size, meaning that they are going to be more wave-like, not so particle-like. And at some point, if the density is really low, and if the temperature is just cold enough, they'll eventually start assuming the same shape which will then lead to one large mega particle or mega substance or well basically one quantum object. And today this is usually referred to as the Bose-Einstein condensate or BEC. It's basically a kind of a substance or a state of matter where certain types of bosons, in this case usually helium atoms, will form these macroscopic objects that tend to behave like quantum objects having their own properties. And they tend to do things that are not possible with classical objects. So basically they start doing things that you would not expect until you actually did it. With some of these things being completely mind-blowing. One of the best examples is from 1999 and this wonderful person right here, Lene Hao, who actually was able to use a BEC to slow down light to an extremely slow speed, approximately 17 meters per second. All this only possible because of the quantum effects from the Bose-Einstein condenses. Then, a little bit more recently, in 2020, several scientists, including Christina Koch, you see right here, used the BC on top of the International Space Station, basically in space, to try to see what sort of effects it would have in the microgravity environment. And turns out in these conditions, half of the atoms form some kind of a magnetically insensitive halo, with the other half forming a more um, dense body in the middle. Kind of resembling, I guess, to some extent at least, the typical representation of a dark matter halo we expect from a typical galaxy. Now, maybe this is a correlation, but in the past, BECs have been sort of used as a potential explanation to how dark matter works in the universe. Although here there is a bit of a problem with the explanation in that, well, BCs don't really last long if there's a lot of other interference. For example, if you increase the temperature, they tend to collapse really quickly. 
And so in case of a galaxy, in some sense, well, if the galaxy has stars in the middle, the actual BC would probably collapse. Although obviously we don't really understand how any of this works just yet. The only thing we know for sure is that you have to have densities of about 100,000 times less dense than the air, and it also has to be in very low temperatures, extremely close to absolute zero. But in this new study investigating BECs, the scientists have identified something else that we kind of knew existed, but didn't really know exactly what it does. In this case, using just the right density, some of the atoms inside the BEC can start forming what's known as a domain wall which I guess can also be visualized this way. And in this case, it's because there are two different densities that form a kind of a junction in between the densities. But what's really unusual about all of this is that on top of this and this being a separate object, the wall is also a separate object. And it seems to act using its own physics. It has its own behavior depending on what you do to the wall itself. So for example, if we were to take a bottle of water and start pouring water in a glass, we're not going to be observing the same effects, the same properties, physical properties, as you would be observing in an ocean where there are a lot of waves and a lot of different activity that doesn't exist in your glass. This idea is usually referred to as emergent properties. In other words, it's an event that appears when there's just enough mass present or enough of something present that it starts to act differently. Another good example, I guess, would be a really, really large flock of birds. Individual bird is not going to be doing the same as a larger flock, and the larger the flock, the more unusual properties it's going to possess. So something similar happens in BCs and a lot of quantum objects. They start to acquire different properties. And in this case, the properties are really kind of unexpected. So we know that if you were to take a smaller piece of something, for example, an atom or a smaller piece of a BC, and if you were to apply force to it, or in this case, if you were to apply electricity to it, it would move in a certain direction. But strangely enough, for this particular wall, for the domain wall, it seems to move in a completely opposite direction, something that was actually completely unexpected. And so this is the first such unusual property that was discovered in this particular study. But I guess the more important part from the study is the uh, actual recipe for how to create more of these unusual phenomena known as quantum domain walls, and how to then try to find out more properties that they might possess. But I guess the big question is, why? What is that really going to do? Well, first of all, the scientists believe that this might help us understand what was happening early on in the beginning of the universe, when there was just a lot of extreme stuff happening and a lot of emergent phenomena that we still don't understand. By studying this, we might actually finally figure out a lot of mysteries of the universe, including, of course, what exactly are the dark energy and dark matter. Maybe they are actually these unusual phenomena that seem to arise when there are a lot of things present in the universe. Right now, nobody really knows. But on the other hand, this is also important in the future of so-called quantum computing. By identifying what happens when you have a lot of things in a quantum computer, especially if this is going to be relying on the BC technology, this might actually help us develop a way to store information better by controlling these larger quantum systems where we can actually predict what they're going to do. And so right now the scientists are really just hoping to find a way to kind of combine these observations and to make a list of what exactly BCs create when there's just enough atoms and enough density present in a certain material. Although right now this definitely looks exciting, mostly because it's going to lead to a lot of phenomena we cannot even predict right now. For all we know, if the BEC get big enough, they might actually lead to some other unusual things that can help us create some kind of a large system with a lot of intriguing properties. Although for now, I guess it's a little bit too early to tell. Either way, check out the paper in the description below, maybe subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.